Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money, hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. Hello, 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 and welcome to today's podcast. Well, this is take two. Yeah, my recorder died in the middle of take one. (laughs) So here we are, take two. Let's try it again. Thank you for coming back. Hey, if you guys want, you guys are sending me requests that you want to hear more stuff about how to farm and what people are doing in the farming industry and those sort of things outside of the um, financial aspect of it. Now, I don't typically cover those things in my podcast because this podcast is supposed to be about money. And so I feel like that would get us like down a whole different rabbit hole. And so I'm happy to do that because I absolutely love to hear when clients are doing different stuff like rotational grazing or you know, direct to consumer or something very cool with agronomy or whatever. And so I like that kind of stuff, but there are a lot of different agriculture podcasts that are covering those things. And so I just think, why would I do that here when this is supposed to be about finance? But if that is something that you guys really want to hear and have us sprinkle that in, I am happy to do that, but again, it would be sprinkled in very limited, and I would not be backing any of those things. It's just providing you information from cool people that I talk to. And so let me know that, but I really, there's so many good agriculture podcasts out there that cover those sort of things. Why would we have another one? That seems kind of odd to me. Anyway, so today I want to talk about getting back to the basics of infinite banking because I have been hearing and getting a lot of questions about what company do I need to use? Mary Jo, what company do you use? How are you structuring the policy? What riders are you putting on the policy? All of those type of questions, which mean absolutely nothing if you don't understand the thought process behind it. And if you have been listening to the breakdowns of Nelson's book, this is just going to simplify it a little bit today. And, And I really, I hate to even do a whole podcast on this, but I really feel like we are seriously missing the point here. You guys, it's all about the way you think. And if you are going to get a book from another agent or you're going to talk to your local agent, they are not going to understand it. I had a guy last week who has been holding on to Nelson's book for 20 years and he has never found an agent that could explain it. Every time he would go talk to somebody, they would try to sell him universal life or indexed life or some crappy permanent life product. And he knew that wasn't right. Nobody could explain the thought process to him. And he was smart enough to understand that, oh, I shouldn't be doing business with that person. And I say this over and over and over and over. If you are not using an infinite banking practitioner because you feel bad that your local agent sold you a policy or can sell you a policy or works with a mutual company. Yet not all mutual companies work the same. Not all mutual companies have a paid up additions writer that they can stick money into. Not all companies have the flexibility of paying the premium, right? But it absolutely amazes me that we are missing the point of this is how you think. If you do not think correctly, the life insurance policy is a mute point. 
Anybody can sell you a life insurance policy, but if you don't know when and how and why to use it, what is the point of having it? It is like having a tractor with a GPS system in it, but you don't ever use it. Why? Why would you pay for that? That doesn't make any sense. When I talk to people and they say, I just had one this week. And they're like, well, Mary Jo, I've got money in an XYZ account and I have money in an ABC account. And so I think I'm going to use the money from the ABC account. Does it matter? It's one pool of money. It doesn't matter what account you use it from, right? It's all yours. It's only one pool of money. There's only one pool of money in the world. And Nelson said it in the beginning of his book. If we took all the money in the world and divided it equally, the wealthy would become wealthy in a very few short years and the poor would remain poor. Why? Because it's how we think about money. Get over the numbers. Get over the rate of return. It's about liquidity and control and thought process. And let's not forget Nelson also said, this is imagination, reason, logic, and prophecy. That's what the infinite banking concept is based on, not numbers. If I could go back, I would, and I could go back, but it's probably too late after about 10,000 copies of the book have been sold, but take the numbers out of it. Take the numbers out of it. Everybody wants to skip to the back half of the book. People skip to the back half of Nelson's book and they don't read the front half. Again, he said it is not a tool to sell life insurance. It's a tool to teach people how to think differently. And if you don't get that, you're going to go to some local agent and buy a policy and not know what to do with it. I had a client this week that said, oh, I've been telling the neighbor guy about this. And he said, there's no way you can farm without the bank. And my client said, you sure can, and it works. And he had, the neighbor has zero interest in learning this, right? Absolutely zero interest in learning this. Because he has the arrival syndrome, he does not want to think differently. He does not want to learn anything. If you don't want to learn anything, go do business with your local guy. Do business with a practitioner that's not licensed. Do business with somebody that doesn't know crap about farming. But then I also, if that's what you're going to do with your life insurance and the infinite banking concept, then I want to see you at Ace Hardware buying seed from their garden department for your 3,000 acres. I want to see you at Walmart buying feed for your calves. That's how crazy it is. It is all about how you think. You can use a shoebox for this concept. If you borrowed money from your shoebox and paid it back plus interest, you would be better off than 97% of the people in this country. Because there's only about 3% of the people in this country that are thinking differently. And think about this. Farmers, last I read, farmers make up 1% to 2% of the population. So let's say that farmers make up 1% of the population. 1%, on top of that, only 1% of farmers are even looking to do things differently and thinking differently. So 1% of the 1%, that's who I'm hitting here, folks. 1% of the 1%. If we have a population of 100% people and only 3% of them are thinking differently, then maybe at the best odds, we can say 3% of the 1%. So when you go to the neighbor, he's not thinking differently. When you go to the financial advisor in town, he's not thinking differently. When you go to the accountant, he's most likely not thinking differently. I ran into a client last week who has an accountant that I truly want to meet. 
because he looked at the concept and got it and said, yeah, you need to be doing this. Not because he agrees with me, but because he actually thought differently to look and he looked into it. He didn't just say, ah, no, I've heard about that, right? He didn't have the arrival syndrome. So maybe we could even go back and say, okay, only 3% of the population doesn't have the arrival syndrome. So 3% of the 1% who are farmers don't have the arrival syndrome? The odds aren't huge here, people. Nelson talks about Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law is our needs rise to meet our income. So every extra dollar we have, we're just going to blow it, right? Because we need this and we need that. If we can beat Parkinson's law, we are better than our peers and we will always win because other people are not beating Parkinson's law because they're thinking differently. Have I said anything about numbers? Nope. If all we did was that one thing, look at the farmers and the ranchers and the people around you that are successful. What are they doing? They're making more money because they're thinking differently. Why do we hire business coaches? And why do we go to programs like Ranching for Profit? Because we want to think differently. We want to get ahead. But again, that's maybe 3% of the 1%. This is a thought process, and we have to get back to the basics of that and kindly remind ourselves of that. We want to think like a banker. We want to be the banker. We want to own the bank. The life insurance policy is the tool. If you have a hammer and you don't know how to use it, who cares that you have a hammer? If you have a tractor with a GPS system and you don't know how to use it, Good for you. You have a tractor with a GPS system. If you have a horse that was trained by a professional that you could ride without reins and only needs cues from you and you don't know the cues, good job. You have a really expensive horse and you don't even know how to ride it. You could have the best of the best and if you don't know how to use it, and you don't know how to think correctly, who cares? Forget about the back of the book and remember, you better work with somebody to help you understand the concept. And if these people that you want to work with don't have the same desire to learn it that you do, Please explain to me why on God's green earth you think that is okay. I don't get that. I absolutely don't get that. I understand you want to work with somebody local. You want to give your friend a chance. I get it. But there are professionals out here that are certified, like myself, to teach the concept. And then it is your job to want to learn it. Think about the basics. Go back to the first half of my book, the first half of Nelson's book. And I get that I keep repeating it, but apparently I have to because we don't understand it. If you are a client and somebody says, well, life insurance is bad. Well, your thought process stinks, right? We have to remember, don't get into an argument with somebody about the numbers because they're just numbers. Yes, the numbers have to work. We know the numbers work. But if they're not thinking correctly, you're going to fight all day long back and forth about the numbers because they are not ready to learn. The teacher will appear when the student is ready. It's like that in any part of life. So I just, I mean, I hope that this was useful to you all, but I really wanted to just get us back to the basics of what this concept consists of, imagination, reason, logic, and prophecy, right? That is what Nelson said. It's all about how you think. And if we think we know it all, we're not going to learn. If we have somebody help us that's not a true professional and understanding this, we're never going to move forward. 
I did not call my ex- myself an expert until just in the last couple of years. And now I can sit here with confidence and say, I am an expert on the infinite banking concept, utilizing that with farmers. I'm not an expert with real estate developers. No, nope, I am not. But I understand the farming industry. I understand the concept. I understand the thought process of why we want to be using it, when we want to be using it, all those things. That makes me an expert in this industry. I am not going to go to a PNC guy that has a property and casualty guy who sells homeowners insurance and auto insurance and has never stepped foot on a farm and hope to goodness that he can try to explain this to me. You have to value your financial future and determine what you want to do, but it's not about, it's not all about some of it. A small percentage of it is about the policy, the structure, the company, the flexibility. Absolutely, that's important. But we first have to start with a thought process. If you have read the book and you are not on my calendar yet, do that. I'm only booking out four weeks right now. So that's good because I was booked out at six. So I'm down to four. Woohoo. And I have people booked out to December and even some, I think I saw one into January the other day because harvest is going to be over. So go ahead, book out that far. We will call you, email you, text you, remind you that you have your appointment. But get on the calendar so that you don't in December come and go, oh, I'm ready to meet with her next week. Well, guess what? I'm going to be booked out four weeks. So you're probably not going to be able to meet with me next week. So go ahead, get on the calendar now and go back and refresh yourself. If you've not read Nelson's book, go back and get it. You can go to farmingwithoutthebank.com and get all of the books and understand the thought process. Go back and listen to the podcasts where we are breaking down Nelson's books. In those podcasts, I have yet to talk about numbers. All we're talking about is a thought process of why you want to be the banker, why you want to own the bank. We are over halfway into Nelson's book and we have yet to talk about numbers. And my book is the exact same way. It's not because we wanted to fill pages. It's because that's what's important first. So I appreciate the fact that you want to do business with somebody local, but there are not a lot of practitioners in this country because a lot of people don't want to take the time to do it. And frankly, I think it's because they're lazy. So if you don't want to take the time to understand the concept and the person locally doesn't want to do that, Why do you want to take the time to educate them and do business with them? Because clearly they don't care as much about your finances as you do. Okay, peeps, the basics, the basics, the basics. I hope that this helped get you back on track, remind you of why you are utilizing the concept or why you need to utilize a concept, why we need to think differently. If you have a subject, a concern, a comment, maryjo at withoutthebank.com. You can send them there. I would be happy to read them. And I'd be happy to hear from you. Okay, guys, you have a fantastic rest of your week. Um, if you are just catching up, well, then we'll hear you'll hear me on the next podcast. Talk to you later. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals.